Welcome to my second video on the BrainWorks PT100 plugin. This video is going to have a little bit of the first video, actually it's going to have the whole first video in it because it was set two minutes of me playing guitar. Uh, it's basically a demonstration of what the sounded like in the context of a track. Uh, but the second half of this, or actually most of it, is going to be a, a screen capture where I go through the logic session and I demonstrate how I used each instance of the plugin with each guitar and what effects I may have used and what impulse response cabinets and how easy it was to get good sounds out of this thing. One thing I gotta say, uh, my screen capture software does not capture the audio that great. So you're gonna get all the information, but really what it sounds like is what you hear in the performance part of this. And the part with the screen capture, you'll get all the information and you'll hear stuff. It's just not gonna sound same quality. I don't know if it's like audio compression or or what the deal is, but. The story with this is last Friday morning, I woke up and I saw a video Pete Thorne had done uh, showing that the plug-in version of his uh, PT100 amp by Sir, the signature amp, was not just universal audio only, but it was also available for any platform. And not only that, they had it on sale for $29.95. So I got that code and I grabbed it because I'm a big Pete Thorne fan. And I figured it'd be fun to make a video and see what happens, see what I can make sound out of it. Because Pete makes everything sound awesome. I mean, he, he literally does. He's cost me so much money <laughs> over the years and stuff that sounds awesome in his videos. And then I get it and it's like, oh, this is what I sound like. Anyway, the reality of this, though, is that this plugin sounded great. I was really happy with it. I was able to get sounds very quickly. Uh, for the most part, it was really easy to understand. There's still some features of it I haven't dug into. But the idea was, let's see how quickly we can get this up and running, how quickly I can actually put together a piece of music and put some guitars on it, and see how it reacts with different kinds of instruments. What you're going to see in the video is that I'm running through a ton of different guitars. I try to get as many guitars in as possible. Uh, in two minutes <laughs> without it being too ridiculous. So there's my 70s Fender Deluxe or Telecaster Deluxe Ventera guitar with the wide range pickups, the Cunefee pickups. You've got my McFeely custom guitars, 454 guitar. That's the one that's all Carina and looks like it has no paint. You're going to have my 60th anniversary Tele, which is basically an American standard with Tex-Mex pickups in it, I think. You're going to see my Tokai Stratocaster, which you've seen in a couple of videos recently. And that guitar now has the Seymour Duncan Antiquity 2 pickups in it after we did all the pickup swapping between that guitar uh, with the Sir pickups, the Duncan pickups, my McFeely 440 with a bunch of different pickup combinations. Uh, so what you have there is that's kind of what the guitar actually sounds like now. Uh, my 2004 Les Paul Standard. I have a Paul Reed Smith uh, Standard 22, I think. And um, I think that's all the guitars. That's a bunch of guitars, though. That's a bunch of different sounds. And the plugin worked great with all of them. I was, I was really happy with that. Uh, in addition to the plugin, you'll see some of the outboard uh, processing. I used mostly just delay, a little bit of reverb. And in one case, I used uh, an even tied Tricera chorus just for the, uh, the intro part. So the next part of this, you're going to see the video. It's two minutes. If you've already seen it or don't want to hear it again, uh, if you look, there's going to be chapter numbers underneath the video, and you can jump right to where the uh, screen capture part starts, and we actually talk about how this works. If you like this video and would like to support the channel, uh, please hit like, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, all things people ask you to do. If you look below the video, there's going to be links to where you can get the plugin off the BrainWorks website. I do not make any... Uh, commission or money off of this. I just, I wanted to try doing something and it turned out really cool. And now I just wanted to talk about it. Especially I have students uh, that were starting to ask me questions about it online. So I figured I would do a little demonstration of how I used it, how many instances of the plugin, what I had to do for each guitar, and uh, maybe, you know, how I recorded guitars. All the guitars in this were recorded direct. The guitar cable straight into my uh, Apogee Duet interface. There was nothing special happening before the plugin. Literally, it's a dry guitar sound and then the plugin and uh, whatever plugins are in the channel strip. <laughs>
let's go through the sounds here on the recording first. We're just going to go through each of the, the tracks on the guitar and I'll play them a little bit in context and then I'm going to isolate and talk about what effects are on each one. This was recorded in Logic uh, for drums. I did the drums in uh, Addictive Drums. Uh, some, some of my students are kind of curious about this. This is kind of a cool uh, application. It's got grooves that you can use. You can just kind of drag them in. It's got a full beat library. You can edit your drums and all that kind of junk. Alright, uh, bass I recorded using GTR, the Waves plugin, just using the bass amp there. I'm, I'm kind of half and half with this. At some point, now that I've actually had the Brainworks uh, Pete Thorne plugin, I might look into their Ampeg uh, bass amp, which actually I've gotten, a few people have told me it's really cool. So uh, we'll talk about that in the, in the future. The first guitar part we're going to look at here is this intro. We're just going to take a chunk of this. Um, and this intro guitar, it's the one like really clean sound um, that I kind of had affected. So let's solo this guy up. If I get rid of the effects here, this is just what's going on with the amp. So let's take a look at the plugin. Um, if you just have it without the effects rack showing, what you've got here is basically the front panel of the uh, uh, Sur PT100 amplifier. Um, I don't know if there's other elements to this. I really like literally plugged this in and wanted to go as quick into getting sounds as possible. So I literally just kind of turned knobs till I got sounds. What I'm using here on this is channel one. Uh, channel one has a bright switch. I didn't really want that. It also has a crunch thing. And you can tell by the gain, I've got very little gain going on here. If I, um, so even that channel has, it has a bunch of, bunch of oomph to it. And I've got the gain kind of cranked up or the level. If we get rid of this for a second, because that's literally all I've got going on with this. Oh, actually, let me take that back. Let's get into the, the rack here. The only part of the rack that I really paid attention to was which cabinet. Uh, and you can actually see, let's shut this off just for a second. Um, this is Pete's 1978 4x12. It's got the Celestion. I think these are the original speakers, G12M black back speakers and it's just a sure sm57 it doesn't get any more basic and rock and roll than this if you want to um so let's play this and we'll go through some of the other cabinet selections so this one has a sterling st170 microphone and, and the nice thing is you can just literally there's the next one this is the one we were using i kind of like the body of this one this one has a combination of the Shure and the Sterling. I'm assuming the Sterling is like a ribbon microphone. I'm not certain though. But each cabinet has a little bit of a different character to it. And you've got a lot of cabinets here that you can work with. These are all Pete's. The 4x12. Here's a 112 like the Sur. Oh, it's a Bogner actually. With a Scumback M75. Different microphones as we go through them. And then it's two twelves. Celestion Blue, so these are kind of like the Vox kind of speakers, I guess. So you got a lot of, you know, just in speaker cabinets, you've got a lot of variety. So I'm going to put this back to where I found it. Um, now if we look at the effects here, the first thing, almost all of these have some sort of echo on them. And I'm just using Logic's basic echo plugin. This is stock with... Uh, with the installation of Logic. Um, I've got it set up where you've got this eighth note repeat because because I did everything um, MIDI with the drums everything's pretty specific to the tempo set in the uh, in the recording session. This is 67 beats a minute so uh, the delay here is set to like an eighth note repeat That's what it sounds like without. That's the wet sound. I tend to like just having a little bit of delay in the background to add ambience. I think it was somewhere around there. You could go quarter note with this. 
kind of does about the same thing. But I like I like using delay uh, set to tempo basically to kind of give some depth to the sound without getting too much in the way of the sound. All right, you can kind of tell it's there, but you're getting very little of the effect out of the delayed sound. Here's without. There it is with. So it's kind of in the background. I'm going to shut this off just for a second. Let's talk about the chorus that's on here, which is the Eventide uh, H9 plugin. I have an H9 on my big pedal board. I really like it for certain things. And as part of the deal that they did for maxing out your H9, which I think they're doing partially because they're phasing it out, they gave uh, a free set of uh, plugin versions of some of the sounds. So this is the. Um, chorus. And I literally just loaded it and went for it and went, oh, okay, this is cool. So I didn't even adjust this at all. This was just kind of what I wanted. Um, I like some of the... You know, there's a bunch of things that you can do with this. You can set it to sync the tempo. But I literally didn't do very much of this. So, so that's that sound. So with everything turned on, there's our sound by itself. And then if we unsolo the guitar, there it is in context. You'll notice that the uh, in context, a lot of the affected sound gets kind of eaten up. Uh, so it sounds kind of wet when it's dry. Not so much, it just kind of sits in there and just sounds kind of uh, swirly. The next sound on here, we can just drag our deal over here. This is the guitar solo that comes in about here. So let's get rid of the effects. It's actually not too bad to even dry. I solo this guy up. Uh, it looks like I'm using the third channel of the PT100. Um, the way this works, to me, it, it almost looks like, and I've never played one of these amps in, in person, but it, it's kind of organized into channel one has its own tone stack, and then channels two and three basically share a tone stack or an EQ, and what you're adjusting is the voicing of the overdrive or distortion. Uh, if I was to change, so let's get this going again. I'm going to set the um, number two about the same. That's the second channel. It's a little tighter sounding. There's channel two. Channel three. It also has a bright switch. I'm not a big fan of bright switches. Yeah, but that's the sound by itself. Um, this also has echo on it. I went kind of 80s with this, so the, the echo is way more than I would normally have. And I went for a little bit of uh, reverb, which you almost don't hear the reverb. So here's just the... Um, There's with the reverb, without. So most of what you're hearing, I think, is the delay. One other thing, the delay is also set to eighth notes. I think if I set it to quarter notes. Set to quarter notes, it kind of gets in the way. With eighth notes, it kind of becomes a little bit more of a wash. And then in context with the rest of the track. I don't know, I kind of like how that worked. And that worked really good with my Sir um, uh, 454 
model, which is the all Karina guitar with no finish on it. It just kind of got that really good 80s uh, shred sound. Uh, when, by the time I started recording this, I discovered I like this cabinet number five. Uh, which is basically the same cabinet from before. It's the 4x12 with the black backs with both the Shure SM57, which is the dy dynamic microphone, and the Sterling. And I'm pretty sure the Sterling is a ribbon microphone. I could be wrong, but uh, it's, I kind of think that's what's going on there. And then the Mic Pre is the BAE Audio 1073, which is kind of like a Neve, which is a pretty classic combination for guitar sounds. So that's that sound. Uh, the next sound that happens here uh, when things change is the main crunch rhythm, which is the Les Paul. Pretty basic sound here. This just has the amp. There's no effects on this. So this one's set to channel two with just the gain, uh, maybe one and a half. It's not much crunch there, but it kind of works with that Les Paul because the Les Paul actually has uh, quite a bit more oomph, you know, in the, in the bridge pickup. The cabinet here is a Marshall, uh, looks like a 4x12 with greenbacks, uh, like regular greenbacks that are the 25 watt ones, and a Neumann. Um, the Neumann, oh, it's all, all kind of different. So it's got a, a Massenburg EQ and a Telefunken preamp, and so this, the signal chain for this one, for the impulse response, is, is quite a bit different. It just seemed to work best for this for me. And this this sound could have been um, let's see what happens on the other if I bring level channel three. In context I think I like the the channel too a little bit better for how it sat in the mix. Now, I, this song that I wrote for this is literally just to get as many guitar sounds as possible. I saw that this was available uh, one morning last Friday and figured, hey, as quick as I can, let's make something that shows off as many different guitar sounds as I can get out of it because I think it's going to sound pretty cool. Um, so the song makes very little sense. It's and the guitar sounds don't make a whole lot of sense over each other either. Um, but this Telecaster sound, this is like one of the, I really wanted something that was like, hey, you know what, let's get a country sound uh, out of this plug-in. So as you can guess, I'm on the first channel. It's got a bit of delay on it. I'm trying to go for like a, um, like a slap back that you can still hear in the track because there's a lot of noise going on. So it may be a little bit wetter than I normally would. And then also this has a, a little bit of compressor. So if I get rid of, let's turn off the compressor and the delay. This is just the plug-in by itself. Maybe the bright switch. This might have been a good call, actually, with the bright switch. That's all the effects. Let's put it in context. Actually, out of context. Yeah, it looks like probably now that we're uh, Monday morning quarterbacking this, the uh, the bright switch would have been a good call on <laughs> this guitar sound. And for some reason, I picked the Sir 212 cabinet with uh, uh, G12H75 creambacks. Now, this cabinet, um, these speakers are what I have actually in my Sir Badger and also my Sir. I've got a Badger 1x12 that I also use with my Deluxe. So I'm... I kind of like these these speakers a lot anyway. It's kind of like a green back on steroids a little bit. Um, and then it's got a couple of uh, SM57s and an AEA R84, which I'm not certain what that guy is, but uh, we'll look that up. And a Neve preamp like we were doing before on the Neve EQ. So that's kind of what's going on there. Um, this one bar thing, I don't really know what this is. 
um, to be honest with you. So let's solo this up. So it's some sort of impulse response thing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is there. Uh, I'm, I might have just screwed something up here too. <laughs> so, all right. So let's talk about the next solo sound on here, which is the Stratocaster. Um, this is my Tokai. Um, this guitar has been through a bunch of incarnations, um, and you've most recently seen it as um, the guitar on um, the pickup swap video. <laughs> Um, that had the Seymour Duncan Antiquities in it, uh, and then I tried some Sir uh, V60 LPs in it. I didn't like those, and I wanted to switch them back, but then I, I had put the Antiquities in my Blue McFeely guitar, and they sounded really good there, so I bought a new set of Antiquities, and this is the guitar with uh, the Antiquity 2. These are the Surf Riders. So here's the soloed sound. Whoops. So we're on the clean channel, we actually have the bright switch going and a little bit more gain. Um, and the impulse response is the same one from the Telecaster. So I think what happened at this point was I took the Telecaster uh, sound. Yeah, I copied the channel and then I just kind of tweaked it a little bit to fit this guitar. And then it's just got a little bit of echo on it. Maybe left over from the previous one without the reverb. So that's that's a Strat. When we get to the next bit though, this is Strat channel number two, this is the same guitar uh, but on the bridge pickup. Let's, let's move these guys around here a little bit. Let's make sure we have the right amp here. And I don't think anything's different. I think it's the same cap. I don't think there's anything different. I think it's the same cabinet. It's the same settings. And maybe even the same echo, just no reverb. I just wanted the bridge pickup. So this is the first time you guys have heard the Antiquity 2s in this guitar if you've been following the channel. And then in context... Okay, so the next bit, these are the, uh, the Paul Reed Smith guitars in harmony. Let's bring this over here a little bit. Um, so in these sounds, I'm pretty sure this is more like I just copied. Yeah, we're, so we're still in the clean, uh, a little bit more gain, um, same cabinet. Okay, so this is the harmonized lead. Um, I'm not a great slide player, so this is this kind of is what it is. Um, like a dummy I apparently I didn't split them in stereo let's fix that just a little bit of echo yeah and then uh, <laughs> it looks like I recorded the last uh, guitar solo part which is the other Telecaster uh, just on the second I'm pretty sure. Oh, guitar solo. 
All right, so here's where I was rushing and made a mistake, apparently. So this is actually the Telecaster you're supposed to be hearing. So probably what's going on is I recorded it on both tracks by accident. This is me seriously in a hurry on the other PRS channel. So it's PRS, yeah. Okay, so I guess what part of what made it cool is the fact that it was in two uh, channels split in stereo with um, different effects and stuff. That's a little thicker than it originally was supposed to. This tells you why I don't, I'm not a recording engineer for a living, because mistakes like that, while it's happy accident, would never fly normally. <laughs> um, but that's part of the sound there. And that, the Telecaster sound on this, it's literally, it's the, um, the same lead sound from the Sir 454 guitar solo earlier. Um, we got the bright switch, we got uh, channel three, we got a bunch of gain. We have my favorite, the 4x12 cabinet that Pete has with the dynamic and the ribbon microphone on it. Um, I just kind of like that for, for the lead sound. So if I, let's get rid of the PRS one here for a second. And then in context. And that's that. That's actually just gone through all of the sounds in the uh, little demo recording with the settings.